The Old Testament reading for the first Sunday in Advent is from Isaiah chapter 2. The word that Isaiah the son of Amoz saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be lifted up above the hills and all the nations shall flow to it. And many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall decide disputes for many peoples. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. The epistle is from Romans chapter 13. Owe no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know the time, that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Alleluia. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Alleluia. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, our king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and fo that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. This is the gospel of the Lord. 
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our consideration this first Sunday in Advent is the Gospel lesson from Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. And the title of my sermon is, Who is this? Your humble, blessed King coming to you. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, sanctify us in the truth, for your word is truth. Amen. Are you constantly coming and going from place to place, here and there and everywhere? We're not the type of people who who really like to stay in one place for too long. Certainly many, many of you maybe even, were coming and going over this Thanksgiving holiday as so many people took to the roads and to the air. The interstates were full. An estimated 49 million people were coming and going. They were expected to travel 50 miles or more during this Thanksgiving holiday. Hence then one of the worst traffic jams ever in L.A., thousands of people trying to get from place to place, coming and going. But then there was absolute gridlock. Gridlock. Nobody was going anywhere. They were brought to a complete halt. They were forced to stay put in their vehicles, not able to go anywhere for a lengthy period of time. As we consider that, maybe it's a helpful reminder to us who are frantically trying to come and go from place to place that it's just too much. It's too much for us to continue to come and go frantically from place to place in our lives, and we need to stay put for a while. Well, maybe you had a chance to stay put. Once you got to your destination, uh, whether it was at home, you stayed at home, or you went to grandma's or grandpa's or wherever it was, maybe you had a chance to stay put for a while. And wasn't it nice for maybe a full day or two to not go anywhere? To stay put. The only place that you were coming and going from was from the couch to the dinner table and back, right? Well, it's not that often that our bodies and our vehicles get a rest, get to stay put for a while from coming and going constantly. Coming home and going to work and going to school to drop off the kids, then to kids' activities and to the gym and to shopping and wherever it is that that you are coming and going to constantly. As we begin this new church year, this first Sunday in Advent, we also need to consider our coming and going, but we also need to consider in our lives how we are sometimes stuck. Stuck in gridlock in our lives. Stuck in some kind of struggle, temptation, or neglect of doing what we know that we should do or should not do. We are stuck. We can't get out. We're stuck in a spiritual rut. We're stuck in a bad place in our lives. We're looking for relief. We're looking for release. We're looking for something or someone to come and to free us. Looking for someone to come and rescue us. To rescue us ultimately from despair. Well, this is the blessing of Advent. The blessed season of Advent. It's a way for us to get unstuck. It's a new season. It's a new day. It's a new season of repentance and joy. It's a season of hope. 
It's a season of release and freedom. And I pray that all of you take full advantage of its blessings. Coming and going from this house of the Lord, this house of worship, a lot in the coming month. Yes, coming here to worship, receive God's good gifts for you in Jesus Christ. As Jesus will be coming to us continually and constantly as we meditate on his holy word and the coming. The coming of Jesus as our humble, blessed king. Coming to save us. Jesus, he wasn't one to stay put. He wasn't one to sit still for very long. He was constantly coming and going from place to place, as we have recorded in the Gospels. The last weeks of the church year speak of his teaching and his preaching about the last days, about his second coming on the last day in glory and in judgment, that which has not yet come. And then prior to that, we have a long period of time in which we are taught of Jesus' life, of his coming and going constantly in his ministry with his disciples by his side all throughout Palestine, preaching, teaching, ministering, and healing from Galilee, way up in the north there, where it was kind of home base for him and his disciples and Capernaum as far north and almost to the sea there with Tyre and Sidon and Phoenicia, and then south through that region of Samaria and east over to Perea and then south to Judea. Jesus coming and going throughout all of these regions during his life and his ministry. It was quite impressive all the coming and going that Jesus did. One place, though, in particular, that Jesus was coming and going from constantly was there in that southern region of Judea in the city of Jerusalem. Three times a year, as a boy, as a young man, Jesus was coming and going from Jerusalem coming and going with his parents for the major festivals, the Jewish festivals of the year, which included also Passover. The one that we remember from Scripture is when Jesus was a boy at the age of 12, right? And he came into Jerusalem, and then he stayed there while his parents had lost him and thought they had lost him and left and went outside the city and then came back in to find him, and there he was in his father's house, right, where he had to be about his father's business. And then during his ministry and throughout, and even in this last week, this holy week, as he comes into Jerusalem, Jesus was coming and going from Jerusalem at least 20 times or more in total. As we begin this first Sunday of the church here, just like we ended last week, we ask them the question that the people in Jerusalem were asking as Jesus entered in this one last time, Who is this? So many people following him. So many people welcoming him. Who is this who is always coming and going? The crowd said, this is the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. But was that the best answer? Who is this? This is a very important question that we must explore as we begin Advent. And every time that we come and we go from this house of worship, we have to ask this question, who is this that I am coming to worship? Who is this that is coming to me and blessing me with his gifts? Well, our intro at today, our entrance psalm, helps to answer this question very well. The words from the prophet Zechariah. 
He says these words, Behold, your king is coming to you. Yes, indeed, he is our king. He goes on to say, Righteous and having salvation. Save us, we pray, O Lord. Those last words there, save us, we pray, O Lord. Do you know what those words mean? That he comes to bring us salvation from all our sins. And it is also that word that they were crying out, Hosanna. That's what that means. Save us, we pray, O Lord. Right there from the prophet Zechariah. So who is this then? The central focus of his ministry from Jesus' first advent, his coming as a baby, is to save us. To save us from our sins. Our King, who comes humbly to die for us on the cross, humbly riding on a beast of burden, a donkey, coming to Jerusalem to save us. Hosanna! And even if those people, even if they didn't quite fully understand exactly what they were saying, they were still confessing what he truly came for, to save his people. The only righteous one, the only perfect one, the only holy one who can indeed save you and me and all people. That is our theme on this first Sunday in Advent as seen also in our collect, our prayer for the day as well. All these things that we do in our worship, they all tie together. And that we, we need to see that. The prayer says, stir up your power, O Lord, and come. That by your protection, protection, we may be rescued rescued from the threatening perils of our sins. And certainly, my friends, they do threaten us constantly, as the devil constantly threatens us, tempts us, leads us into temptation. And then it says in the prayer, we're rescued from the peril of our sins, and there's that word again, saved. Saved by your mighty deliverance. Not as a war hero does he deliver us, but he delivers us through his humble death, through his resurrection. So who is this? He is also a prophet. Indeed. But he is more than a prophet. He is also the son of David, King David in the Old Testament. He is the fulfillment of the perfect son that David never had. Remember Absalom? Absalom, the, the, the son who tried to usurp the throne of kingship, tried to take it from him and actually entered into Jerusalem as David exited out, weeping and crying as he climbed up those, the Mount of Olives. But now... We have a king who enters in truly as our Savior, the Son of David, who is our Savior indeed. And he is the blessed one. He is the blessed one to rescue us, to redeem us, to reconcile us back to the Father from those threatening perils of our sins, our sins that constantly burden us, our sins that, that get us stuck, that make us feel like we are stuck in gridlock and we can't get out. He has taken those sins also upon himself so that we are freed as he is our true deliverer. Dear friends, as you are coming and going from place to place in the hustle and the bustle of this busy season, make sure that you keep coming to God's house where Jesus is coming to you. And stay put. There's no hurry. It's okay to take your time here 
to receive, to be blessed, to be in the presence of your Lord and Savior. Where he promises that he comes to you continually, and he comes to you continually each and every time you gather through his word as it's preached, as it's proclaimed to you, and also through this blessed gift of this meal in the Holy Sacrament. The Lord's Supper, Jesus coming to you and Jesus for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. And so, Jesus comes so that you are not shaken, so that you are not shaken by his presence in your midst, so that you are at peace and you are calm, comforted each and every time you gather where he comes to you, comforted as you gather around his word, as you meditate on his word and daily devotions with your family, as you get stuck and you get unstuck once again. That perpetual cycle of our daily lives in God's favor. So as we get closer to Christmas, the world is going to certainly try to compete. Compete with this procession to the Lord's house. Continue to follow Jesus, to come here. They will wave their gifts before your eyes to try to get you to focus on this over here instead. This is more attractive, right? To focus us away from the question that we need to be asking constantly, who is this, this humble king, this humble savior that is coming to town. Idols will be placed in front of our true king and above our true king, promising the greatest fulfillment, the greatest joy, that there will be smiles on your faces if you just have this. To say that your lives will be so much more enjoyable if you just have this. It'll be more fun you will get out of being stuck. You will be freed from worry. But we know, even if it gives us a little bit of momentary satisfaction, that it won't last. Here today, gone tomorrow. For Jesus, though, he is truly the one who is here to stay. He is truly the one coming to town and always staying in town, always coming to us to give us true fulfillment and true success through his righteousness, through his precious blood, through his salvation. So as we gather on this highest of mountains today, the mountain of the Lord, the house of the God of Jacob, gathered around his gifts, we have come because he has come for us first. Come as the prophet Isaiah teaches, that he may do what? He may teach us his ways. And that we, that we may always then walk in his paths, walking in his righteousness and walking in the light of the Lord. And that's why processions are so beautiful. They're such a wonderful part of our festival church services. We are in awe of Jesus coming to us. We bow down to the cross before Jesus who comes to save us. We are shaken in our bones at the thought that he has come for me. He has come for me, a poor lowly sinner. He has heard my cries of Hosanna. He has heard me, please save me now, Jesus. He has heard me and he has come for me and he does always come to us also as we sing those hosannas notice after 
my sermon and as we prepare for the Lord's Supper, we are going to sing a song in the liturgy, the Sanctus, that also confesses our hosannas and also that Jesus feeds us with what does save us. Who is this? Namely, Jesus, our Savior, and his true body and blood, give it and shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Right here, right now, today, Jesus comes to you, and we still sing, Hosanna, 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 blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest, meaning Hosanna in the highest heavens the one who has come down from heaven for us. And blessed indeed is he, because we are so thankful, so thankful that as we are constantly coming and going in our lives and things get so busy and we get stuck at times in gridlock, that one thing stays constant. Our King Jesus coming to us bearing our burdens, carrying our sins, saving us, lifting us high upon a mountain, leading us up then to the house of the Lord. Thanks be to God for Jesus' sake, and in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> 